And here we go for game number one on Ascension to Ire. And if you're just joining me, guys, this is the weekly recap from last week's games. Just to catch up on what happened in some of these series. In the Junior Star League. The Junior Star League is for players from Bronze 3 all the way up to Platinum 1. If you get, uh, you know, your Diamond want to play in the JSL, we do have the Duddle Circuit, which is for Diamond players. Those who got promoted into Diamond and aren't now ineligible to play in the series. Adeptive and too risk you're here. Welcome to the stream guys So anyway in the bottom right hand corner of a such to IRLE the orange Zerg pieces he goes by the name of inner orbiter And in the top left hand corner the purple oh I forgot this was a clan match. Oh, this is gonna be awesome right, the purple Zerg or purple Protoss pieces of inside gaming and this team kill match, he goes by the name of Adeptive. I completely forgot that this was a uh, team kill match, guys. This is awesome. As a, uh, you know, the clan officer for Insight Gaming, and that, that, just, that just makes it everything very more, or how should I say, much more entertaining. So we do have 17 hatch, 17 pool coming out for Inner Orbiter, and a wall off for Adeptive, who's just going to go ahead and expand. Both players want to play that macro game. Man, we just jumped up in the view count. And Inner Orbiter is now in here. Getting in here just in time. We just started the series, mate. So anyway, we do have Adeptive coming out here with this probe. Gonna go ahead and scout this probe, I would imagine, or bring it back home. Unless he's gonna do something cheeky. That's a very awkward position to do something cheeky from with a probe. Imagine he's for scouting purposes, but, you know, go ahead and take over the watchtower, you know, just sit up there, you know, have that vision. If you're just going to leave him hanging around. Looks like he is just going to go right ahead and do that. Boom. All right. So now, all in all, we do have the Cybernetics core coming out here. This is where the tech is going to start to open up for Protoss. Looks like he is just going to go ahead and throw down that robo. We do have Resonate or Depth coming out here. So I imagine this is going to be a bit of a Resonating Glaive. Adept all in type of deal, Adept Aggression. And Orbiter does go ahead and get that expansion up and running. Queens are popping out now, Res or Metabolic Boots on the way. I do like the idea to pull the drones back off that gas, because that does allow you to have those drones mining. But you just gotta remember to put them back on gas later, so that, you, that way when you do need your tech, you do can go ahead and get that. Now, we do have a pylon over here, this is mostly for scouting, get vision on that right side of that base. Now, he can very easily hide some tech here. It looks like he is going to go ahead and throw down a couple of gateways. So, how many we got? We got one so far and a Twilight Council. So, this should be. Could easily go into the DT Surround or Dark Shrine with a couple bit of Archons behind that. That is very much a standard play right now in terms of the PvZ matchup. We do have a couple of Lings making their way across the map here to make sure there's no third base down for Adeptive just yet. No cheeky Protoss being a greedy or a greedy Protoss. There's nothing worse than a cheeky greedy Protoss. Is there an Evo Chamber back home for Enter? Nah, this is, he's just gonna poke up here. Imagine the Evo Chamber will come down here very shortly because it does look like he wants to elevate a little bit and poke up here see if he can't get in here and do a little bit of damage. Third base is on the way, however, so it is about to pop and finish up. So he's gonna get that base lead. Get ahead in that base count. No Evo Chamber just yet. You do need Evo Chamber to go ahead and morph that Drop Lord. Or Drop Lord. Stalker or a Sentry over here playing Laser Tag. Hey man, this doesn't seem like a very fair matchup. That poor, that poor Overlord getting chased away by this Sentry. He's going to go ahead and get cleaned up eventually. Which funny is his Overlord's actually getting a full scout right now. We do have Resonating Glaives on the way and a Bailing Nest. The Evo Chamber is just now finishing up for Inner Orbiter. We do also have that Bailing Nest about to finish up here. About a few more seconds and we should see some Bane Drops on the way. Now one thing I like to see is that Carapace upgrade for the Overlord. So he will be able to just speed right on in here and make this drop. 
see if he goes ahead with the lings first. I imagine he will. I mean, gotta come back around and see that. Ed too risky. That's always a way to figure out who, like, when you play next week. Like, to kind of see an idea of exactly how they play. You know, you might be playing with these two guys in next week coming up. So you might want to be able to, you know, get a leg up on to see how they play. Link Drop does get in here. It is going to start to find a little bit of damage. The Shield Battery not quite done just yet. He is focusing down the Shield Battery and not the probes. It is going to be able to make the way into the Mineral Line, however, and start to clean up some of these probe kills. He's going to make his way right down to the natural. I like this decision very much here. Just to try and keep Protoss back here. A warp in pushing away these uh, links. So he won't get too much more damage done. Six probes so far. And Adapt is just still kind of hanging back. Trying to build up that Protoss army. He's going to move out across the map with a bit of a two-base aggression here. Resident Glaives are done. There are Immortals in this army. So he does have a very strong backbone in terms of DPS and damage. A few more Adepts are going to join in. Looks like they're going to split the army up a little bit here to try and you know, just hit from two different angles. Catch it a point, you know, make sure there's nothing too cheeky hanging around the map anywhere. Okay, so he's just going to take control of the watchtowers to get the vision back. Now, there are a lot of Banelings here that will be able to clean up these Adepts very, very easily. There's no shade coming out just yet from these Adepts. And a bit of the awkward control there. It's always difficult. Trust me, I know. I'm a Terran player. When I try to shade with the Adepts, it's like, it doesn't even look like that. It just looks like, oh man, all my Adepts just disappeared. And then I don't know where I sent them. So it's always entertaining to try and figure out where that goes. Third base is now on the way for Adeptus. So he is looking to get into that later stages of the game. We do have a Lurker Den now coming down here for Inner Orbiter. As well as that muscular augments coming up for the Hydra. So he is looking to go into that Hydra Ling Bling Lurker composition. Which unless you have like the Storms and Colossi to deal with. It's very difficult to actually kill that composition off in a straight up fight. And what you do need to do is charge lots and mortals as well. So you don't want to waste any time wasting, like waiting on your depths to get up range to attack. You just want to do a charge right on top of the Lurkers and catch them off guard. Roly poly Banelings. Making their way up into this towards this third base location. It's not actually here. He still has a drop where he still has a drop where. It'd be nice to see him keep the drop aggression going here with these veilings. And it'll just keep killing probes. The more damage you do to a Protoss this late in the game, it just makes it that much harder to get back into the game. Especially when he's down at workers. Like 49 probes or 49 total probes. Should be up around that 50-60 mark or a 60 mark by now. But all in all, this game just kind of stabilized out after that. We do have a bit of aggression over here. Trying to get some damage done and pick off a few of these drone kills. Really should. Shade it toward the natural. We're going to get on the queen. Just going to be able to clean all this up as well. Two queens here. Change fuse the queen. Keep it alive. Hey, seriously, why do the, the new pro like, adepts just disappear in like a nuclear explosion? Do they have like a nuclear reactor built into them that just like causes them to blow up in a mini nuke? Anyway, Inner Orbiter looked like he wants to move out here on four base. Like, I mean, I can't blame him. He does have the economy to do it. Does have quite the uh, composition to do it with. Where are the lurkers? Do you have any lurkers yet? No lurkers just yet on the production tab. Plus two melee is on the way with plus two range attack. Another robo is on the way. For adaptive. Now, one thing I would like to see is that robotics bay to come down here. So you can go ahead and start tacking into the Colossus. Because the Colossus right now is what you're going to need to actually be able to take this army on. Especially when the Lurkers start to come out. Right now, I mean, you're going to be able to hold on here for a little while, especially Guardian Shield and the Immortals in this composition. But once the Lurkers come into play, all these Lighted Devs are just going to disappear. So, I mean, this is just a little bit here that you're going to have to actually watch in terms of, like, once these Lurkers do come to play. Do you have the calls on the way? Are there calls on the way here? Call upgrade? Nope. No drilling upgrade just yet for the lurkers i mean if you haven't seen that upgrade in action it's absolutely insane like the lurkers just disappear off screen there's just nothing there anymore for lurkers and then all your army dies because you're just getting paled and just 
Oh, it's very disastrous. There's a lot of bands being morphed in here before this fight actually happens. Lurker go to Burrow. And here we go. The spine balls are going to come out here and start to push this army back. And now this is actually going to be in a very bad angle for Adepter to take a fight at because the siege crawl of the lurkers here is just going to be able to port. I was about to say, it's just going to force him into a very awkward fight. But now he has the Adepts and the Immortals in his army. This is nothing these lurkers are going to be able to do in the end. The so firepower of this Protoss army is going to be absolutely insane. As these Immortals do have the hard shield, which does take a lot of the quite a bit of damage to get rid of straight up. We have to wait for it to time out. And this is basically the perfect counter to the lurkers. If you don't have the Colossus, you don't have any like disruptors. They did change the disruptors. So the Disruptors are a unit that kind of got... Yeah, we don't use these anymore because of the charge-up timing. And the Orbiter not done yet. Going to go ahead and pour on some more aggression. He does have to bank to keep this aggression going. I would like to see some Storm upgrades coming out of uh, Adeptive here, though. Because against this light unit army of Inner Orbiter, you're going to be able to just uh, melt right through that. Well, this storm either way. I mean, you do have a lot of bit of quite a bit of damage here. You do have some AOE through the Archons. I guess light units Archons are also a very good answer. But with no more lurkers in the mix, it's gonna be a little bit easier of a fight to take for Adept. This just it comes down to the Baneling hits. There's no sentries here, so we can't force field out some of those Banelings. We do have a fourth base for Adept over here on the south side of the map coming into play. Looks like Inner Orbiter is going to try to go and rotate around to that location, actually. So he will be able to find this base morphing in down here. Start to find a little bit of damage. Now, this should force Protoss, if he's going to defend, to come over here and kind of get out of position a little bit over here on the thirds, which does open up the option for a run by into that third base. Bailey's are finding a, quite a bit of connection there in the early parts of the fight, so he does get a little bit of a bailing hit. Archon here, however, trying to focus down some of these bailings. It's just going to awkwardly die out in the end. The Ling's also getting melted by the Stalker of Death army. Arson Zealots here as well, tanking for some of those bailing hits, and this is going to force Adeptus back once again. Now, however, we do have the Ultralis swap. I, I don't know, man. I, Immortals are still also really good against the Ultras. But 3-3 on the way with Chitinus Blading against a 1-1 a Protoss that is just now about to finish up. I mean, the upgrade advantage has been in over his all game. He just hasn't been able to get the army he needs to, you know, take advantage of it. You know, Protoss with shields makes it very difficult to actually kill off Protoss units. A few more Banelings morphing in here. Looks like this time he's going to pressure the third. Oh, Adeptus army is still highly out of position over here. Expecting another attack to hit this fourth base location. So again, it's going to force Protoss to relocate once more. And this is where I would like to see a Ling run by from Zerg players. You know, because Ling run bys are actually really devastating when you have to fight on two fronts. There are some Zelts here, but you know, these Zelts are going to disappear once the Ultra Tech is revealed. Immortals against Ultras. Immortals do actually do quite a bit of damage to Ultras. Let's just see how this goes. 2-2 two -two is on the way. Storm done yet? Nope, still no storm. Storm would also be a very good tool to have in this army. Do have a few more Archons being morphed in here to help deal with some splash damage to these light units. With the Ling Bling Hydra. But here we go, Inner Orbiter gonna pressure up on the stair. There are lurkers in this army now as well. Army supply is not in favor of Inner Orbiter, but he is getting quite a bit of damage done here. And Protoss actually gonna swing around from behind. There's no detection here just yet. And these oh, the Lurkers are actually finding some really big connections here. In terms of actually not having any detection there, the Zealots just disappeared. But this is what I'm talking about. The Immortals just do a hell of a ton of damage to these Ultras. And they just disappear really quickly. So this is where you... Your tech swap here shouldn't have been to the Ultras. It should have been to the Broodlords. Because there's nothing here for Protoss to really deal anything with the Broodlords. Now, Inner Order did expand again up here to the north. And he did just kind of led Protoss right to this expansion, so he should wind up actually getting this kill on this base. There's still an expansion down here in the south that hasn't been taken for a fourth base. And here we go, that Ling run by is on the way. And this is going to get a lot of damage done, especially with Protoss being out across the map right now, killing off this hatchery to really just 
Is it base killed? Yes, but at the same time, it was a base. It's not really going to play a factor, especially once these lings come in. He's going to have to recall back to answer these lings. It looks like he's just going to keep pushing forward with this army. Of... Oh, nope, there's a recall. As I say that, he does recall back. These things are just going to make their way into the main base now. He does have two more Ultras and Hydras coming out here. He's trying to rebuild that higher technical or tech-based army. These things are just trying to buy him the time to do that. And or Mortal is going to get picked off here on the ramp. He is trying to get this base down again that was killed off in that earlier fight. This is turning into quite a bit of a macro slugfest. I mean, both players are just trying to macro quite a bit. There is another Ling run by Sub to go into that fourth base. And here we go, Adaptive wanting to push out once again. This is actually going to be one of the situations where he's going to move out. And in order is going to hit him while his army is completely out of position once again. Now, again, this is where you should be going into your Spire. Because if, with the Spire, you're going to be able to basically produce free army. This is not really going to matter if it dies off. It's the actual Broodlord unit that you want to keep alive. And there's nothing here that shoots up. Absolutely nothing. And your opponent doesn't even have Blink. Does he have Blink? No, he doesn't have Blink either for his Stalkers. So, all in all, the Brutalor swap would be the best thing you could possibly do here. As these Ultras are really expensive units to just keep throwing away into these Immortals. And once again, there's just still so many old Immortals here to knock down these Ultras. And these disappear so quickly. And the longer this goes on... I'm definitely liking Adeptus' position more and more. Because the tech that Inner Orbiter is currently throwing at him, it's just throwing away army, throwing away resources lost. And he's going to be able to get in here and get a really good position. There are Lurkers morph again. He does have detection with his army, so he could catch these Lurker Cuckoos before they finish. I don't like the decision to move up here with this army, however. These Immortals do get surrounded. A recall out would be beautiful a long time ago. But in the end, it... His army got completely surrounded by the Zerg, and that's honestly probably what's going to kill him off. I mean, he doesn't have any kind of immortal tech anymore out to actually answer for these Ultras. And just like that, he, this game is just swung right back in Zerg's favor. And GG is going to get called out. And that's going to give Inner Orbiter game number one in this series. Of a, honestly, kind of a mistake there to move out of that choke point. But... I'm going to go right ahead into game number two. WTH is just chat up to, says the I and team. Um, we are currently casting some Junior Star League StarCraft matches, mate. Getting the recap from week five, just catching up with some series here. Here we go, in game number two, currently down 1-0, or up 1-0 in the series, in the top left-hand corner of Catalyst LE. He goes by the name of Inner Orbiter from Inside Gaming. Sporting that swag, Cal. And in the bottom right-hand corner, his opponent, also from Inside Gaming, down 1-0 in the series to see if he can bring it back against that Zerg. He is Adeptive. Now, Adeptive, you say that last game is embarrassing, but we've all been in a situation where it's like, this is what you have to work with, and you're, you're trying to, you know, you don't want to tech swap in anything else right away because of that fact your opponent's just showing everything that you can already counter. But now, you gotta remember, in some situations like that, if you just put, like, a warp prism somewhere on the map, you know, just kind of leave it there. You don't even have to sit there and micro it. Just throw three or four zealots there every once in a while. You know, keep your opponent answering that warp prism longer and longer, and you are going to start to rack up some damage. And sometimes you just need that Hell Mary play to actually get back into the game. And as a Terran player that always goes nukes like crazy, that's one thing I learned really well. It's just like if I nuke an opponent, and I get a really good like nuke off and say like their army, and then maybe nuke their economy somewhere, I'm right back into the game. I can get control of this map or get control of the game again. So sometimes it's just trying to find that one play, and honestly, Inner Orbiter was in a very tight situation there. He did have the base count, but he wasn't tech swapping into anything to answer the Immortals, or answer the Adepts, like 
since those units don't shoot up, the best thing you could have gone for, honestly, then it was like, honestly, just to start kind of attacking in air yourself. Or Inner Orbiter, you're in a situation there, you needed to get the Broodlords out. But honestly, moving out of that choke point like that is what killed Adaptive in game number one. Was, other than that, he was in a really good position just to choke you out slowly as you were throwing away army, trying to kill him off. And just like that, a little bit of a micro mistake could easily swing a game. Now, he did have a 17 hatch, 17 pool come down once again for Inner Orbit up here in the north, the Catalyst LE. Do have a proxy pylon coming down for Adeptive. The wall off is done. Now, an inner order does get a full scout here on this natural base. He does see exactly what his opponent's up to. He says, okay, well, you walled off. Everything looking pretty standard so far for that Zerg. There are a couple lings out to scout around here and help secure that third base. Let's see if he can adapt to the circumstances. Is that a pun or is that foreshadowing of something in the series to come along? Now, again, third base coming out here for Inner Orbiter. He's going to get ahead in that base count and get that economy up and running. All in all, a very standard game except for this cheeky nonsense up here in the corner. There's two gateways. This is like, like some old SOS nonsense here. Coming out with this proxy double gateway nonsense. Remember Bridgehead? It was actually pretty funny to watch that on Bridgehead back in the day. Probably I'm going to get thrown down over here for a death for some vision. Don't want to get caught in that cheeky drop from Inner Orbiter. Did get six probes last game. That's what I'm saying. Like if you're just, if you're a Protoss who just walls off and Zerg sees that, well, why don't you just elevate? You know, like it's just it's the way to go. And Inner Orbiter did that last game. He did get quite a bit of information, got a little bit of damage done. What are you rallying off? It must be an overlord. In a order, actually going to completely miss this up here in the corner. This is actually really, really funny that he's not seeing that. This is in such an awkward position. And honestly, picking off that adept like that should have been kind of a tell. That something might be on the map somewhere that you're going to have to worry about. Warp gate getting chrono boosted out here for adeptive. And once again, we do see that ling drop get ready to happen once again. Now... Right, he should swing these links around to the front and pressure the front a little bit at the same time. And that way you can just sell your drop a lot better. Like I said, there's nothing coming in the front. It's all at the front, I promise. And then you just drop him in the back. But Inner Order seems to smell something in the water. He seems to know something is up here. And there's definitely these proxy gateways. So he's keeping some links back just to make sure he doesn't get completely caught off guard. Warp gate not quite done. Here we go, the drop is on the way. Now this could unpower these three structures here. This forge, this twilight council, and the gateway. If he snipes out that pylon. Which is going to make it take a little bit longer to, you know, get these upgrades rolling. The Depths and the Zealot are on the way back. And here we go, the Ling's making their way straight to the mineral line. They're going to start to be able to pick up some of these probes. The rest of these Ling's are going to wind up fighting these Adepts. Two probes have gone down so far. Three is on the way. And he is kind of splitting up his aggression here a little bit. And I love the decision to try this again because it did work last time. And this time it's actually getting quite a few more probes. He got six probes so far in the main. Total of seven probes went down that time. Did a little bit more damage. You know, that one extra probe could have been key. To this adept play coming up here in this top corner. You know, going to get in here and start pressuring his third base. And now... This is a situation where your bailing us is about to finish, but you're on nothing but Lings right now to counter this. And Lings, obviously we all know, just kind of disappeared to Adepts. So Adepts are also going to shade over here into the natural base. Going to get here to start to try and find some damage once again. Are kind of awkwardly just kind of dancing around right now. I'm not sure what to target with the Queen hitting them, the Drones hitting them. And these Adepts will end up getting cleaned up, but hold on to the phone. There's still more Adepts on the way, just kind of focusing down the hatchery. Not really any kind of targeting going down here. Trying to frantically position them behind that gas so that the links can't get a full surround. We'll get cleaned up. This is going to start to allow more drones to be picked off. And again, more reinforcements from the main base making their way across the map. I know the warp pit up here in the north as well. This is actually starting to find quite a bit of damage here on the inner over the side of the map. The hydras are on the way. Now, one thing about hydras, this is not what you want to go for in this situation. If you're going to try and tech up to deal with this, you want to go for the roaches. Because the roaches at this point 
can tank a lot more damage from the resonating glaives of these adepts. And hydras are a light unit, and they do take a little bit longer to build than roaches, I do believe. We got banning connection, finding a pretty decent banning connection there. But the splits for adeptive here, being able to, you know, adept his way right into this game. And possibly the 1 1 series here. More shades being sent across to the main base. As more lings do pop out, he's going to be able to get in here and clean up these lings as well. Three Hydras on the production tab, and keep in mind with plus one and Resonating Glaives, Hydras are just going to disappear. They're, they're a glass cannon unit for a reason, and Adepts will just be able to chew right through them very, very easily. And also these Adepts continue to slowly find more and more drone kills. We're up to 14 so far, and now the Hydras are popping up all that resources lost tab there. A little bit of A click there. Now, actually I do believe these Adepts start to like one-shot drones by themselves at one point or another. With that resonating glaives, that was a thing back at the beginning of Legacy of the Void. Like, adepts were just one shotting workers by themselves. It was really, really absurd. So that's why the resonating glaives came into play as an upgrade. Now, behind this, Adeptive wasn't sitting idle back home. He was indeed expanding. He's getting some more gateways out, getting some robos up. Actually, four ro two gateways and two robos on the way. chat over here. I need a proxy hatch anymore. No, don't. I'm bad. <laughs> Not bad, just mistakes happen, man. It's, it's one thing about StarCraft is you gotta figure out exactly what you did wrong. And figure out how to adapt or adapt, adapt your way back into the game. I mean, that's exactly what it comes down to. Now, one thing about this expansion that Inner Orbiter is getting ready to take is if you come over here and kill this rock off, and it blocks the ramp, there's absolutely no way your opponent is going to be able to rotate around fast enough to defend that third from ever being picked off. Now what's interesting is the fact that this is still sitting up here in the corner. You had to have figured out that that is up there, so I mean... He still doesn't know the gateways are there. So right now, the Adeptor's position right now is actually really, really in his favor. I mean, he's got charge on the way, he's got plus two on the way. And in order back home is just trying to figure out what to do here in this situation. I mean, he's going to try and get another base back up and running. He's trying to re-expand twice. You know, that's something you can do when you're behind is try to double expand. You know, play a little bit greedier and see if it pays off. Because if your opponent just sits idly back like he is right now and just tries to max out, you can easily make your economy just get you right back into the game. Now, charge is about to finish up. Plus two attack is done. We are about to have plus two melee come along as well. So we will indeed see that, you know, upgrades coming into play here. Charge is going to be a very key factor in this. We do have a warp prism coming out of the robos here. And a couple more immortals. So charge lot immortal. Once again, going back to that composition. It's a very strong composition, but it just lacks a lot of anti-air. And that's something I kind of just disagree about it. Again, another round of adepts get ready to be warped in here. Now this is going to set up for the pressure from adeptive to come out. He should move out with this army about the same time this is attack up in the north here hits. If he sets this up right, he will be able to go ahead and knock down his opponent back down to two base. But now, Zerg on the other hand is going to go ahead and move out. These armies are going to clash right up here. He's kind of in a very awkward position. You know, it's going to force Pros to come back a little bit. The Adepts do shade into this four newly acquired fourth base. Now again, that is going to force Inner Orbiter to have to back up. You know, back up and get back over here and say, you know, this may not work the way I was hoping it would. He's just going to have to pull all these drones, and, you know, these drones are just going to start to melt very, very quickly here. Even the queen is going to start to disappear. The plus two upgrades being a factor here, these queens are just going to disappear. He's trying to shade in on top of these drones, you know, trying to pick them off. He is going to cancel the shade. As he did figure out, all the drones are just walking right back to him. And again, the drone count is getting picked off down to 36 workers now as this aggression was cleaned up. But again, Adaptive back home, just, you know, spending his money, trying to get everything he needs back together. And now, also, there is a thing you could do here in this type of situation as a Zerg player. Throw down a Spire, get like five or six Mutas out, and reveal that you have Mutas. Because now that's going to force your opponent to have to go into Stalkers or some kind of anti-air unit. Which generally will be Sky Toss, which means he doesn't have the Stargates right now. 
So he will be able to go ahead and, you know, have to... Yeah, there's no Stargates in place. So he will have to throw down a couple of Stargates to build Phoenixes or Vordrays or Carriers, you know, to deal with that. And that's a tech swap. It's going to kind of hurt him in the bank, especially when you just go right back and say, yep, the views were just for show, mate. Just trying to say, yo, how are you reacting? Or what are you going to do with these coming out in play here? Templar Archives on the way in a robotics bay. This is about to finish up, so you will go ahead and tech up into those Colossi. And again, this, this gateway out here is finally going to get found by the creep. As the creep does go ahead and just... Oh, wait a second. Maybe I need to go kill that. But, and the Orbiter is going to go ahead and move out here. Once again, into this Charge Art Immortal Army. And again, these glass cannon units are just going to disappear. He does know about this fourth base down here in the south, so it looks like he wants to pressure that fourth. Now imagine it just to be immediately cancelled as his aggression comes out. He's going to try and save it. But the focus fire on this Nexus should mean it. Okay, there's the cancel. And the Depth is going to move into position here to try and fight this army. He's just going to back up. Both players are going to back up and say, okay, I got what I wanted. And Orbiter can go home, you know, rally up some more army. But again, he's on the clock right now. And you have to assume that at this point in the game that Toss is going to start attacking into something bigger and bigger and bigger. It's scary. A big scary Toss ball. The OP Pro Toss ball, so to speak. As he does finally realize, oh! There's a couple gateways up here. Maybe I need to kill these. Maybe that will stop these adepts from warping in across the map. Here we go. Adept is looking like he wants to ball up here a little bit and move out. He does have Colossus out. No. Okay. Thermal Lance is just now starting up. So he doesn't have that upgrade just yet. But again, the plus two Colossus here. Plus three Colossus moving out here. Is going to be able to get here and find quite a bit of damage. He just awkwardly walks right by his face. Now, again, if he were to kill these rocks right now, there's no way for you to actually run down this ramp in the pen. But the firepower of this Protoss army will just be able to melt right through a lot of this Protoss reserve. And honestly, he doesn't even have to take this fight now. He can recall out, save this army, you know, continue to max out. Just go right back to maxing out. Of course, he's already maxed out. What am I saying? Get the 200 200 army supply here. He's gonna move out right now. Just keep this pressure going. That inner orbiter, you know, with this glass cannon type of composition, just isn't gonna have enough firepower here. As this army is just gonna disappear. And I should go ahead and close out game number two with the depth of tying the series up in one apiece. As he's just gonna get in here and start to knock down the hive as well. The hive is gonna end up falling. His thing is getting here, trying to find some damage where they can. The hydra's on the high ground, trying to DPS down what they can. And GG gonna get called out as Inner Orberg gets knocked out and Adept, or Adept of Tides up the series. How many kills on that Colossus? The Colossus had a total of 7 kills. We're gonna go ahead and get into game in number 3. Game number 3. Where did we go? We're going to Black Pink? Nice. And here we go, guys, for game number three in this series between Inner Orbiter and Adeptive from Inside Gaming. Spawning into the top right hand corner, the Orange Zerg pieces from Inside Gaming. He goes by the name of Inner Orbiter. Both players are on their match point here, ace point. And in the bottom left hand corner, tying up the series off some very beautiful macro adept play. In the bottom left hand corner, he goes by the name of Adeptive. Hey, I love how the replay actually changed the clan logo there. Or changed the emblem. I guess you don't have our clan logo up there, mate. Gotta represent! Represent. Alright, so we do have Proveus here. Gonna throw down a gateway. Go ahead and get the scout. Now, I'm curious to see exactly what we have in store. You know, Adept. Or in order, gonna go ahead for that 17 hatch. 17 pool. We do have this probe coming out here. He's gonna scout, see all that's going on. So, again, Black Pink. Had to play some hosts or some things everybody loves. Like the Stripper Nova. Everybody loves Stripper Nova. It even has its own track. 
And look how it only plays when there's like a unit that goes by it. Blizzard still hasn't figured that one out for StarCraft 2. You don't have vision there, nothing moves. Even the terrain. Even even these signs over here don't move. Where are these signs? There's the signs. How about some nuke cola guys? And see, even the sign doesn't move. That should keep updating. That should keep updating no matter what. It's a doodad. It's not an army unit. It's not a structure on the opponent's side of the map. It's part of the map. Another stripper over here for you. Yeah, it even has its own soundtrack. And fun fact, for those who don't know, the dance it's actually doing is a night elf dance. That one right there. From World of Warcraft. Bit of a nerd moment, sorry. Or should I be sorry? We're all nerds here. And anyway, we're definitely going to go ahead and start that Cybernetics Core and finish his wall off. He will be able to tuck the unit in there and make sure it stays pretty well defended. Now, one thing that does happen a lot is people will expand to the low ground and wall off the low ground rather than up high because it makes it a little bit easier to defend. And Orbiter does posture up here with some lings. This probe in a very peculiar position up here. I mean... Could easily proxy. Well, I didn't think about that. You could proxy a couple gateways up here and pile on it in the back and then throw down the two gateways to block off the pathway. You could even cannon rush from there. That, 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 that's pretty interesting. So, I do believe you could sneak a pylon in right back there in that corner. We do have some lings playing the uh, patrol game up here. Make sure nothing's going to sneak up into their base. As both players just kind of see, don't really be up to anything too cheeky just yet. They're both just kind of playing a macro game, wanting to get their tech up, wanting to get their economy up and rolling. Metablock boost is about to finish up. There's only one gateway down for Adept right now. At this point, there should be at least three more gateways. So unless you're planning on doing something cheeky... Oh wow. Did that Overlord see the pylon? No, the Overlord doesn't even see the pylon. Sneaking a Stargate in right up underneath your opponent's nose. I love it. I love it. This is actually going to catch him completely off guard because there's no no spore caution. No 4 minute spores on the way just yet. The 4 minutes, 30 second safety spore so to speak. We do have a bailing nest on the way. And there's going to be some aggression poured in at the front as there is a bit of a hole here. And this is where Sentry is coming to play is, you know, just force filling off very, very quickly, very, very easily. Here we go. Yeah, you should see him pressure right here a little bit. He's got a bailing bus at the front. Now, this Stargate is done. There is indeed an Oracle on the way. <sighs> this might be a bit of a builder loss depending on who gets the most damage done because, uh, the Bangling Bus at the front here can get quite a bit of damage done. And there's a lot more army here, and that means a lot more DPS. Now, imagine Inner Orbit is just going to Bane Bus the front and be able to close this out very, very easily. First Oracle is about to pop out. Is he to bring it home? No, the first one is still about to pop out. Bangling's walking up the front, and with no sentries here, he can't just force build these out and then kill them off. The Bangling's going to bust right into the front. The Ling's going to get in here, wrap around on this Oracle Mortal. And that's going to kill off poor Mr. Big Daddy Immortal. The Ling's actually going to split up and run into the main, run into that natural mineral line. Going to knock down that robotics facility. And that should end up just calling out GG right here and now. The Oracle on the other side of that trying to find damage. But, you know, spellcaster units this early in the game don't have that advantage of just being able to ramp out a lot of damage. And she's frantically just trying to work in some of the depths here. You know, trying to find a way to defend this. But all in all, there's nothing you can do, mate. This is, this is going to be it. The Bailing Bus catches you off guard, you know, that proxy Stargate. Probably should have been for maybe another Immortal or a couple more gateways. But, yeah, all in all, a very good series all in all, guys. Both players, you know, taking it to a game three. That's what we love here on the JSL recap. That's going to close out this series at 2-1 for Inner Orbiter on that team kill. Congratulations to Inner Orbiter.